Good evening, girls and boys and boys and girls. My name, <laughs> ooh, my name, I'm a weird, I'm a weird one. My name is Anthony Resinello. I'm a social and relationship coach living in Los Angeles. And today, who could be a better example of the best couple that is exactly who they are than the beautiful Obamas? Michelle and Barack, to be exact, if you weren't sure who I was referring to. And there's not a lot of interviews with them together, of them interacting, but I would love to use one right here today. Basically what I'd love to do is just show the chemistry they have for each other, show the love that they have, point out the adorbsness that both of them possess for each other, um, and hopefully you'll get a kick out of it. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll teach you something in the process. I have no idea. I go into these things cold. That's how I like to go into them. Let's see what happens. Gail King is with President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. And folks, it's the first time this first couple has done a live interview together. Hello, Gail. Gosh, there had to be like about eight lights blasting on them. I mean, I have, I have three, I have four lights on right here. Two like professional camera e lights. It's just so crazy how, this is so boring. Why am I even talking about this? Hello, James Brown, and how cool is that? We are in the blue room of the White House. He just said, hello, hello, hello. Hey. And hey, this James. is the first time that this first couple has done a live interview together. So we are so psyched and so excited. Special thanks to you, Michelle Obama. Very good to see you, President Obama. Already, they're just emanating such a warm, a warmth through their personalities. Like you could already tell that they're such positive, happy people. You have any special plans for the day? Who's on the, what's the menu? Who's coming? I've been cooking off, all Mrs. day, I've been up there. Uh, don't don't let her, don't let her tell the stories now. Barbecuing, <laughs> I've had to grill out. Yeah, so I'm tired. Oh, 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 so cute. They're so charming together. I love how they playfully tease each other. Right off the bat, they're already jokesters. Just such an important element of charm is being playful, being quick-witted, and uh, Barack and Michelle are exemplifying that perfectly. But I got myself so, together for this. Well, <laughs> you, clean, you clean up nicely, Mrs. Thank you. Obama. Thank you. I didn't know if you needed extra house guests. I come with a, a posse of 33. Yeah, we got a lot stay, of people in our house. Otherwise, we can feed some bush. We're getting on the Acela. So when you're at a Super Bowl party at the Obama house, do you watch the commercials? Do you care about the commercials? Oh, no, no, no. Game, game? Every, every, you know, we're like everybody else. Folks folks rate the commercials. Yeah. You do. Yeah, people. But yeah, we have, okay. but, but okay. basically we have sort of three ways that we, we do the Super Bowl. We have the okay. serious watchers. Yes. And that's the treaty room where you gotta be, if you're in that room, you're watching the game. Watch the game. Then yes. there's the outside room where the kids are, where they're kind of fooling around, they're by the food. And then there's- We keep the, them away. Then okay. there's the, what I call the champagne room. Uh huh. That's What's where my that? mother sits where you really don't know what's going on, but you're close to the champagne. <laughs> no, that's and everyone's where grandma wrong. is. It's like, they oh, hear some it's, shouting it's and like, oh, must, something must happen. Another thing I love about them is how they finish each other's sentences. And they don't do it in a way where they're interrupting. It's like they're complimenting each other, not with an I, with an E. They are helping, they're supporting, they're, they're, they're making each other better in the conversation. They are a unit. And uh, in that unit, they are expressing themselves as individuals, but also as one. Um, it's really beautiful to see. When do we start breaking out the six pack or mixing the martinis? I was wondering at which point does that happen? Uh, That's starting now. <laughs> That's starting now. Actually, once we get done with this. Who, who's more likely to yell at the TV during the game? Oh, you know why they, it depends on who's playing. Look, yeah. it's been a while since the Bears were there. I know. So yeah, we don't that yell that much. Look, we enjoy watching the game and, and we hope for a good game. But if, it, if there's a good play, we'll all scream. You'll hear all. Oh, oh. Yeah. Ooh. Do you care about the halftime show? Coldplay, mm -hmm. Bruno Mars, and Beyonce. I care deeply yes. about the halftime show. Yes. <laughs> deeply. Genius. I got dressed for the halftime show. I hope Genius. Beyonce she likes really what I have yes. on. <laughs> Have you talked to her about any dance moves? Because those of us who have seen you dance on Ellen and Jimmy know that you got moves. You do too, Mr. I've got President. Some moves. Yeah, yeah, no, I've talked to Beyonce about that turn up for what I'm like, look, babe. 
you got to put this in your next video. Obviously, mm. she didn't listen. <laughs> no, Gail. I, no, <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I wow, know. I was impressed, though. No, no, because listen, I know you guys are tight. I just love how quickly and comfortably, like, relaxedly witty they are. It's they're not showing off when they joke around. They're not over the top when they joke around. They're not trying to impress the person when they joke around. It's so relaxed. I love that. I just love how calm they are. They really are the and and I know it comes off as though I am just like praising them, praising them, praising them. Uh, but honestly, I don't watch the Obamas. Like I don't, I, my girlfriend is in love with them. She literally watches documentaries on Michelle and reads books on them and all of that stuff. I don't really care about them. But when I see something great, I comment on it. When I see something great, I know it. And these two are just the most charming couple I've seen. Do you know there's a movie out called First Date? It's coming mm -hmm. out. I saw it. And the thing that struck me, in the movie, you're driving a raggedy car with a hole in it. Oh, yeah. This is true. And I'm thinking, and you got a second date after driving that car? Because I'm so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I could make up for the hole in the car. It, 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 thought, it was a hoopty. I thought I'm going to upgrade this brother. <laughs> a hoopty. A hoopty. <laughs> He's like using old-fashioned language now, like old guy language, because he... He likes thinking he's an old guy with, with the gray hairs. But uh, it's true. There is something about charm where when you own your vulnerabilities, when you own everything about you, when you make what you have as the best thing in the world, when you come to somebody and you show them, yeah, it's a piece of crap car. I got a hoopty whatever, you make it feel like it is the coolest thing to have this hoopty. Well, you suck people into that world and make them go, wow, yeah, yeah, it is kind of cool. I like it. Like who wants like, what? Kind, why do I want to date somebody with a nice car? Like, what is that? That's too, oh, uh, uh, I don't want to date somebody like that. Um, there's something about being a charming person where you kind of suck them in to your reality and make them see things the way that you do. Um, if you are embarrassed, if you're ashamed of what you're doing, you're only making others ashamed of you as well. <laughs> uh, couples, I want to play, I call the POTUS FLOTUS game. Mm -hmm. I love it when he... I love it when he holds my hand. Oh. Okay, I love it when she... <laughs> I love it when she laughs. Oh. She's got a great laugh. I can always count on her to... I can always count on her to uh, tease me about something. <laughs> I can always count on him to uh, not disappoint me. Oh, I told so you that good. a yes, long you know, time ago. Yes, I've never forgotten it. Mm -hmm. And Jeez. after leaving the White House, POTUS will want to do take a walk by himself <laughs> outside. You think so? Taking mm -hmm. a walk after leaving the White House, Flotus will want to. Uh, she's going to want to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know roam around the world in ways that we can't do when we're traveling yeah. uh, in yeah, official I what, capacities. I've often wondered about that. This yeah. is an envelope called POTUS prediction. Oh, oh, yeah. nice. oh. Mm -hmm. guess where I'm going with this? It's All so right. elegant. Because I know that you don't make predictions, but I am asking this brief favor for you to circle who you think and your name, and we'll read it on CBS this morning tomorrow. Here, I have a pen for you. This is uh, a lot of pressure. No, no pressure. So, it's you're going to read pressure. it tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. But I, and I have to fill this up. I can't just well, say. I'm respectfully asking. You know what? You're not forced. I'm, uh, I'm respectfully asking. We won't reveal it until tomorrow. And I'm a witness. He right. did it. There you go. Okay, put it in okay. the envelope. I've got to put it in the envelope. I love how the camera is trying to sneak a peek. Uh, gonna be, this is sort of like yeah. the Oscar. Thank edition. you, thank you, thank you both. Thank, thank you, you Mrs. Obama. Thank you. Because <laughs> this wouldn't happen without you sitting here with us. I'm so appreciative. Always good to see you, Mr. Great President. And guess what? Super Bowl. We're Happy not Super done Bowl. because oh, we have yeah, other things to discuss. You and I got to talk I'm going to go up to the champagne room. Things like Zika, North Korea, you game? May we go to the awful Oval Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right. James Brown, back to you. So I just love, I mean, aside from the fact that they they are so just comfortable with each other, they are so relaxed with each other, you could tell that they really do just love each other and that they still are charmed by each other after so many years. And you could see that 
because of how they still like to tease each other in playful ways. But something I really do want to mention, and this is what um, I've heard Michelle comment on before, and I'm sure Barack has said the same thing, is that because they are a black family moving into the White House, they have to be perfect. And anything less than perfect, and they will be attacked, derided for it. We see Barack and we see Michelle and we see how perfectly charming and graceful they are and witty and sweet and kind and thoughtful and, and everything. Um, but we also have to acknowledge that they have to work so hard to make sure that they are representing their culture in a way that does them justice. And they shouldn't have to. Of course, it's great to be proud and represent who you are in your culture. But to the level at which they are scrutinized is more, it's obvious that it's more than other white families that move into the White House. Um, and they shouldn't have to do that. And it's, and it's, it sucks. But this just presents a bigger picture of racism in America. And it's coincidental of the things that are going on right now. This is just a very small example of how racism works. Black people, in order to be seen equal to white people, have to operate at such a more perfect level. White people are able to get away with so much more merely because they are white. It's sickening and horrible, but it's an ugly truth in the world and especially in America. It's something that I truly, truly wish can go away. Now, I am sure that Barack and Michelle they're not exactly what we see on TV uh, because they have to represent perfection. They cannot get angry. They cannot express disdain um, in anything that is not socially acceptable. And the thing about charm is that you must misbehave. And this is the one thing missing from this interview is misbehaving. The Obamas are not allowed to because if they misbehave, they get punished for it. But it's important to know that Barack and Michelle have sides of themselves where they are a little more naughty, a little more deviant, a little more bad, a little more misbehaving. And uh, that is part of who they are just as much as this really well-polished uh, side of them is. Um, and I haven't seen any interviews of Barack or Michelle much after the presidency was over, but I'd like to, and I'd like to see how different they are, how much more loose they are, how much a little more, you know, let their hair down they are. But that's all I wanted to say for today. Um, again, I love this couple. I see why my girlfriend thinks they're just the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, um, the ready spaghetti, the ready paschetti. That's it for today, everybody. Please join my Discord. It is awesome. You will love it. You could meet me in there, chat with me and chat with my other subscribers that are interested in learning more and improving their individuality, their dating life, their social skills, their relationship skills, their charm. Um, it's a very, very supportive group, so don't be scared of engaging with others in there. If there's nothing else, you could watch another video in three, two, one.